My name is Pete O'Neill, and this is Vision Mindset. Today we have Jonathan Pasley, president of PDR Web Solutions. We're going to have him in studio to talk about some of the challenges that he's faced in starting a business and how he overcame different hurdles in his life. This is Vision Mindset. Don't go anywhere. John, it is great to see you. Great to have you in the studio. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me out. It's, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Great to be here. So. so a lot of the folks that view my show don't know who you are. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Sure, sure. So uh, Jonathan Pass, leading president of uh, PDR Web Solutions. So I uh, started the business when I was 22 years old um, and, and now almost 10 years later. Uh, we've served over 300 customers, uh, really internationally, um, and uh, what we basically do is we come into a business almost like a, a full-time marketing department um, and help them generate more customers you know, for their business using online marketing. So uh, in a nutshell, that's, that's basically what we do. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're at a point where you're young, you get bit by the entrepreneurial bug, mm -hmm. right? You make a couple of dollars, and some time goes by, and you decide to launch PDR Web Solutions. Mm -hmm. So in between when you launched the web company and now, tell me some of the challenges that, that you've had, some of the obstacles that you've had to, to overcome along the way. Uh, one of the more recent hurdles uh, that I've had, so uh, in April of, this is what, 2017 now? So April of 2016, right? Uh, one day I'm in the office. You know, working hard like any entrepreneur, right? And mm -hmm. uh, working late. And uh, one day, I mean, this this evening, I, well, that that evening was like April twentieth or something like that. I uh, all of a sudden just, you know, kind of cough something up and like there's blood in it, right? I'm like, hmm, that's kind of weird. So let me try to do it again, see if I can duplicate it and mm -hmm. do it again <clears throat> and blood in it again. I'm like, huh. Okay, we'll back to work, right? So I go right. back to work. <laughs> and, you know, then my wife's voice in the back of my head kind of kind of starts, you know, saying, "No, Jonathan, you need to go home." And so I, uh, so I'm like, "Okay, you know what? No, let me let me go home because just in case, um, you know, whatever, I, I'm home if, if there's anything." And uh, so I pack up my stuff and I uh, I go. I, I start to leave the office. And I feel a little nauseous. I'm like, "Ah, oh, well, I can go home. I'm not too far from the, you know." not too far from home. I say, no, let me just go to the bathroom just in case. So I go to the bathroom, long story short, and all of a sudden I start just throwing up nothing but blood. Wow. Nothing but blood. And um, as it's coming up, I'm like, what in the world? You know, it's just... Frightening. Frightening. Yeah. Frightening. Um, so I, uh, I'm not a hospital guy, but I think when you start throwing up nothing but blood... It's time to go. It's, it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to go. So... Go to the hospital, and um, you know they, um, you know, they check you in and things like that. And you know, doctors will say, "Hey, you know what? Most likely it's an ulcer. You're a business guy, stress and all that. It's ulcer. We'll go in. We'll do an endoscopy. We'll put a shove a camera down your throat, look at it. It's probably ulcer. We'll patch you up. You'll be good to go." I said, "Okay, good." So, uh, um, so yeah, they they hold me overnight, and the next morning they do they put me to sleep. And um, so I wake up after they put me to sleep and. All I see is like doctors rushing around, mm -hmm. and I see. It's the last thing you want to see. The last thing you want to see, right? right. <laughs> and uh, I see my wife, and at the month, at the time, uh, two-month-old son. My wife looks super worried, mm -hmm. right? And I got all this stuff shoved down my throat and all that, and I'm like, but you know, something in me is like, something's not right. Something's not right. And um, you know, at that point, I'm. I just pray and I say, you know, God, please don't take me away from my, you know, wife and two-month-old, you know, son. I'm not yeah. thinking about business. I'm not thinking about all these goals. I'm just, it's them at that time. And um, so, you know, long story short, fast forward, um, what happens is, what happened was that uh, there was a, a tumor mm -hmm. on my stomach that burst. Wow. And I was literally bleeding to death. And, um, you know, so they, they had to go in and, and cut it out. And uh, they cut out about 75% of my stomach, uh, parts of my liver. And, um, you know, some of them are recovering. And, and uh, I'm thinking that's it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That, that, that sounds like major surgery and all that. 
So you, uh, after that, they said, okay, Jonathan, will you follow up with an oncologist? I'm like, okay, I don't know what an oncologist is. I'm like, that's just a doctor, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I just went through surgery. Cool. All right, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I go to the oncologist, and um, he doesn't have the best uh, bedside manner, should I say. I guess he's kind of immune to, you know, he sees patients all the day. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, Jonathan, look, uh, I've got a conference in about 10 minutes, so I'm going to make this quick. Uh, let's just not beat around the bush. Uh, Jonathan, you've got cancer. Uh, yep, and wow. it's stage four. Uh, the reason why it's stage four because we found it on your stomach, we found it on your liver. It's spread. It's stage four. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to put you on this medicine. You take it. If you don't take it, bad things are going to happen to you. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's it. Now, now if you have questions, because we had questions, uh, my nurse, she's going to be she's going to be here in a second. She'll answer any questions you have because. Uh, I got two more minutes left. I go to my conference. Um, so uh, he should answer any questions you have. She'll tell you, she'll tell you about the medicine. And uh, yeah, you know. So you, <laughs> you just found out you've had cancer. You've had major surgery. You find out you have cancer. And the doctor doesn't have time to talk to you. No. No. Wow. Nope, it doesn't. Like you're here. You look great. Thanks. So Thanks. What, what did you do? So that whole process where you mm. went through your treatment and you're coming you, on the other side of this, you found out you've got cancer, you're taking your medication. What did you do specifically for, for John? Not for PDR, not for anyone else. What did you do to get yourself through this to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to muster up some strength to get through this situation and I, I want to get back to where I was before? Sure. So... Um... It was nothing but God, man. <laughs> nothing but God. You know, I'm definitely not going to sit here and say I had all this strength and blah, 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 because everyone has a limit. Yeah. Oh, and I was taken to my limits. <laughs> because, you know, once you hear that, no- that news, then nowadays you have, you have something called Google, which can be a gift and a curse. Because if your toe itches, you're dying. Oh, if your ears my itching, you're dying. You're dying. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Your mind starts taking over, and mm-hmm. you start Googling stuff, and you start joining these forums on Facebook, and then, like, oh, my goodness. It's all bad news. It's all bad news. So, actually, the first year, I didn't. I said I didn't want any of the medicine because I Googled it, and, and like, the only thing I found was, like, oh, you're going to die if you take this medicine, and this, that, the other. And, like, because, you know, you have both sides. You know, you have the natural community, and you have the traditional, and they... They both think each other have no idea what they're talking about, right? So, <laughs> you know, so you have no idea what to do. You're stuck in the middle, like, well, where, where should I go? Because each one is saying no to the other. Um, so the first year, I, I, just, I did the whole natural thing. I'm like, ah, oh, no medicine. It's, it's evil, blah, 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 you know. And uh, that was a journey in itself. Um, but it, for me, it allowed me to just kind of sum it all up. It allowed me to see that you're not in control. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much, I think everybody thinks that they're in control. They, they try their best to maintain control. You know, we think we control our days. We think we control this, that, the other. But literally right now, like, this building can catch on fire. We have no control. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope happen. that doesn't happen. fire extinguisher. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you just, you have, you think you have control. But, you know, I think sometimes these challenges happen. God places these, these, these certain obstacles in your life to remind you, like, you're not in control, buddy. So if you had a message or one thing that you could tell people that are going through something difficult, maybe it's health-related, maybe it's something else in life, loss of a loved one, but being in that place of, of, of hurt and, and trying to figure out what the future held for you and coming through that, what would you tell someone else that's right in the thick of something right now? I know it's hard, but try to look for the lesson in your pain. Try to look for the lesson in your challenge. There's always a lesson to be learned. I think lessons are learned not in the successes. You don't learn anything. The only thing you learn when you're successful is that you think you're the absolute ish, right? (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) You're the man, you're the woman. Like, I did it. I mean, you didn't learn anything from there. But when you fail, you're like, well, I'm not going to do that again. You know, you you learn Mm -hmm. through those, those challenges, those failures and things like that. So, if you're in an obstacle, if you're in, a, in, in pain, whatever it is, try to find the lesson um, and, and learn from it um, because the downs are only temporary. Right. You're, I mean, there's ups and downs, there's valleys and, you know, and, and, and mountains in, in your life. 
So you might be in that valley, you might be in that low point in your life, but just know that you know an up is coming soon. And, and I think the sooner that you learn that lesson in your lows, the faster you can come up out of it and, and, and get to you know, the, the higher place that you, you need to go. So um, That's awesome. Outstanding. Well, thanks for joining us on the show. It's, it's been great having. talking to you, and I'm, I'm sure that someone watching right now is going to take something from what you said and, and, and be able to apply that to their own life. I'm well, hoping they do. Hoping they do. So. Thanks, John. All right, thank you.